Hello everybody, welcome to Blaze Reviews. We're bringing you all the latest movie reviews from a higher perspective. I'm Kay. And I'm Ada Rick. And today we're bringing you the holiday that saved America, that changed our nation, The Purge. Oh, Not yeah. just any Purge though, The First Purge. First Purge, yeah. This one is directed by Gerard McMurray. Uh, it stars a relatively group of unknown people, really. Yeah, no new, big name. a lot of newcomers. Yeah, yeah lot Marissa Tomei is probably billed as the biggest star. Right, yeah, she's definitely know. the biggest name, yeah. But other than that, none of these people, I think, have acted in a big Hollywood film, have they? No, this would probably be all of their biggest uh, projects, yeah. yeah, I think. Um, I'm not sure how to say his name. If it's Wyland or Elin, Noel. Yeah, um, he's pretty much the main. Yeah, he was role. the main character, the main lead, and then another pretty major character was played by Lex Scott Davis. So yeah, it's not a very big cat that you would know. So. Right, uh, she happened to be in Superfly, pretty, which came out pretty recently. No, too. no I saw that. The, so they don't. I, don't I didn't see it. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, this movie follows, like I said, the first purge. So you really get to see how the purge got set up, why they set it up, and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and. They show you like how people were resistant to it, but then they kind of gave a nudge to get everybody purging. Yeah, it, a big nudge. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of similar to all the other purge movies. Basically. Yeah, it really, um, you know, that, that was one of the highs I thought is it followed the lore. Yeah, what they all the stuff they set up in the first three films. Yeah, it really it, it just followed right through with that. And to me, like with prequels, I have a I hate prequels that just. They kind of they retcon everything in the mm -hmm. prequel. It's like this isn't what like you set up. None of this stuff could have yeah, possibly happened. None of this stuff happened. Yeah, but all this stuff made sense. Yeah, everything. They was, show yeah. how why people were like hesitant. Like you, like they make it seem like everybody was just gonna be embracing it at first. And right. All the other movies. Right. They showed you everybody had that fear. Like, oh, I don't know about killing. All right. Time. Right. Well, they set up the scenes with Marissa Tomei. Yeah. Where she was like interviewing her. Her people were like interviewing people yeah. to see like so Their psychological. Stuff right. Right. So she got some data. Trying to give them a nudge. The you know the the Hollywood screenplay data <laughs> that like you just get on people. And they gave them a nudge to like encourage people to either stay home or purge. Right. So right, that, right. that kind of made sense of why people started. They were incentivizing. <laughs> yeah. But another good high thing came from the gentleman you mentioned earlier. Oh yeah, Wildin' It. Yeah, he, he played. Oil. He played. He played William. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. the main protagonist, I guess, of the whole series. He played a drug dealer who was trying to help out his community because, I, as you can tell from the trailers, they target low end communities yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes sense his story aspect because, yeah, of course, the drug dealers are going to protect those right, people. Right. And that's their biggest money. That's their so. that's their customers. Yeah. So you kind of get that government versus. The versus the street, yeah, but like in a really stupid. in a really weird way. Though, it sounds yeah. stupid. But it was the best part of the movie. Yeah, it actually his storyline was yeah. definitely the strongest one, and they never explicitly stated, did they? His military background? Mm, I don't think so. I but he was like thing. he was like super thug. Though, yeah, and he knew everything. Yeah, about yeah. All the military. <laughs> but his, his friends were in the military. Though. Yeah, they, they stated that pretty explicitly. But yeah, yeah he, I guess he, from his actions, you could tell he was kind of military. yeah. Um, like, cause when they did the choreography, that was like another high I thought was mm -hmm. the choreography. Oh yeah, that action um, set piece they had in the staircase. Was, yeah, it was I, well shot. And yeah, it, no, it, it was like, good. yeah, it wasn't, in, it wasn't chopped to pieces. Yeah. No, it, it, they they edited properly and mm -hmm. um, Which like, a lot of directors seem to be struggling with. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, like. Paul Greengrass did it in the Matt Damon uh, Born trilogy, yeah. and I, like everyone thought, oh, that's how you, that's how you cut a film. Yeah, everybody just, da, 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 da. yeah, they just pull out some some blades and just start chopping it up. But, but yeah, uh, other than Noel, I don't think really nobody else in the cast stood out. The no, girl, no. she was yeah, she was pretty good. Uh, Lex Guy Davis was pretty good. Yeah. She, she she had a presence. I thought mm -hmm. like when she was on screen, which. I thought she could have been on screen a little bit more. Um, yeah, they really didn't showcase her. Yeah, they, they didn't. Uh, I thought she could have been on like kind of like a lot more. Um, but there were there were so many characters though. That's the like, biggest thing I think <laughs> that comes down to the purge. Yes, yeah. as we get into the downers now. Yeah, <laughs> the um, purge always introduces eighty five characters and especially well, no, not movie. really. No, yeah. this one this one. The, like, the last two did. The last two had some characters, but they still you know Frank Grillo's character was like a thread yeah. and. Um, they had some carry. They had some groups, some pockets yeah. that they focused on. But this one was just focusing on like literally just everybody. <laughs> everybody that came up had a backstory. And you, like the deaths, like a huge downer for me was when they would try to magnify the death scenes. Yeah, give you that simple, trying to make. Yeah, you that and it's like I literally don't even remember him <laughs> at all. Like, <laughs> okay, I remember seeing him. He looks familiar, but like, I literally don't care. I was like, like <laughs> turning to you and actually like, is that his brother? And then you started to be like. 
who's that? <laughs> who is that? Yeah, I was literally like, I, I don't know who that is. That's yeah. a good minute on his death. Like, yeah. It's supposed to be big, a big dramatic death. Right. No, it really was. Okay. Yeah. You were supposed to feel the weight of it. And I'm like, man. And that happened like three other times. Who is No, there was, it was probably, yeah, it was probably three or four other times where he was like mourning his fallen brothers and sisters. They're like, oh my God. I'm like, who mm, was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He was in one scene one time, yeah. And then after they kill some a character, they seem to introduce another one. Yeah, <laughs> right after that, reason. yeah. Uh, yeah, th that was for sure. So they could have toned that down a lot. Yeah, they could have cut a lot of these characters out, especially with the gang thing. Like, they could have... I thought the some of the, like, the storyline with the gang... Yeah. I thought that could have been drawn out more throughout the film. Mm -hmm. it, kinda, it, kinda, it kind of was just like, bing, bang, boom, it was, it was over, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, that could have been fun for, like, a nice b plot and you could have cut a lot of these other characters out as yeah. far as like focusing on them that way it would have made you know it would have highlighted his lieutenants i guess is mm -hmm. who all those people were this thing suffered from like bad characters. oh though. man like marissa tomei's character <laughs> like yeah like i said she's the biggest star in the movie that you probably heard of but, but she shined the least she she, she shone the least she was yeah. in there for at most 10 minutes yeah the trailers Probably all her scenes yeah. combined. Yeah, probably. Actually, I'm like, wow, yeah. they're not utilizing her at all. No, they cut to a random shot of her. I'm like, wow, she's in, she's in this movie. <laughs> yeah, because they were in the streets for so long, yeah. and they cut back to like the office or whatever. I'm like, what yeah. is this? I'm like, oh, I forgot they said this. Yeah, already. the the HQ scenes. Yeah. <laughs> so her character know. was bland. She it, was really just on the screen to make a whole bunch of facial expressions and stuff. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just a lot of reaction like, shots. It's not working. She pull up what? monitor three. <laughs> Pull up monitor seven. It's like, oh. Um, there should be purging. Why ain't purging? Why ain't purging? This isn't following the data. That's all she kept. That's what all her lines was like. This isn't following the data. And it's like, well, uh, you interviewed like 10 people. So it's a pretty small sample size. So, yeah. It, it didn't look like she did her research. Oh, and um, another downer for me was their cartoon character. Oh, there's um, a lot of cartoon characters. But yeah. I, I know which one you're talking about. No, the, the one who was named after a cartoon character. The super villain <laughs> they had. The them. super villain who was supposed to be like Mike Myers. Mixed with crackhead. Mixed with a crackhead. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Myers was literally a crackhead. There's, like, li there's literally a yeah. character in this car called Skeletor. Yeah. Like everybody in the streets called him Skeletor. They just everybody started calling him that. Skeletor. Yeah. Somehow I don't know him. how he knew everybody's name when he was in prison for I don't know how long. But it was like that, his character did not make any sense. He, he had he had superpowers at some time. When he snuck up behind that dude, that was not natural. Yeah. <laughs> he was definitely shoehorned into this movie. Yeah, like uh, you know they had a lot of characters, but he was just shoehorned. Like uh, I noticed, Platinum Dunes was one of the produce yeah, production cup. Yeah, Michael Bay's co company was behind this. Don't don't be scared. He's not, he's yeah, no, he's not the director or anything, but I feel like he was a Michael Bay like insistent yeah. kind of thing. You can tell that they have the worst explosion I've ever seen. <laughs> they just threw that in there because Michael Bay was a part of this movie. Oh man, that explode! I've never seen an explosion happen and then like it rewind. went away. Yeah, it went away in reverse. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I was like, wait, y'all even got that rewind noise going. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. I was like, this is not how it happened. Uh, okay, did they have time traveling works. powers? Was this a time release That's what grenade? I thought was going on. I thought some time uh, travel shit was going on. Like, yeah. What the fuck is going on? I'm from the future. You can't purge. No, no, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Yeah, but, but there was uh, a terrible explosion there. Yeah. Um, that get some laughs out of you. I promise you that. So, yeah, the the lows, yeah, definitely that character stuck out to me as, like, this is a total cartoon. As soon as I saw him, I Well, yeah, he opened the movie. He was the first shot, and so... His makeup was not very good. Like in the first <laughs> scene, Victor's ass I that. noticed his teeth were like fall. You know, they were just they didn't just color his teeth. I think that was false dentures completely. Yeah, because I look, I was like, those are false dentures. His scars are about to fall off. Like this does not look good. Yeah, this doesn't look good. It was a bad start starting point for it. Yeah, the uh, the opening scene, the opening scene, the opening image was uh, it let me down. Yeah, but you know the transition from Act Two to Three, I thought was like a highlight of the yeah, film. Yeah, then when the action started picking up and, and um, after, like, what, 40 minutes they finally got to the purge? Probably. Right, right. Uh, 30 minutes. It took them like 30, 30 minutes. Yeah, I checked. I checked. It took like exactly 30 <laughs> minutes and they were like, purge you, was you on. You were like wondering, like, damn, are we watching the yeah, purge? Yeah, like, like, the, the purge was on. Yeah, like 30 <laughs> minutes in. But, um, like, something I'll say is like, don't let our downers like, dissuade you from the movie because the audience was really into it. Yeah. Yeah, they were really into it. Yeah, uh, especially in the third act. 
Man, they were just like, you yeah, know. They treated like it was an actual horror movie. They were, le- they were legitimately cheering. Like, <laughs> like cheering like multiple times, yeah. So it does keep you involved. No, too. yeah, no. It, it keeps you involved. And definitely, I would say, because I'm a huge Purge fan uh, yeah. of the film series. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. The first film, I love like the initial taste of the first film. I didn't like it that much. Uh, no, I, like because I didn't, I, they didn't use a lot of the premise that much. It was basically just a break in. The no, it was just a break in. But I was really in love with the world, with like the mm-hmm. whole idea, the political the aspects. Yeah. Stuff, yeah, and then they really took it to you in the second one mm-hmm. with the revelations of the political aspects and stuff. And you're like, oh, okay, so there is something to this whole thing. Yeah. Like, and then the third one. Where they kind of built on the second one, I thought, with the political stuff. It was a little, it was a little more cartoonish with some of the characters. Yeah. But the to me, to me, the second one was the highest, yeah, the that, peak of the series. That's what got me excited for yeah. the third one and stuff like that to get back right. into the first. Because after the first one, I was just like, eh. Yeah, the first one was just kind of a really like, it was it was kind of its own thing. Yeah, yeah it, it wasn't connected to the other two. But this one, I think, yeah. keeps more in line with the third one. Yeah, the, I think it, the second and third one, because uh, with the revelation of like, oh, the government is like behind this mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's really their own propaganda piece yeah but it, um like as a an aside i have a problem with you know political these not political movies but these movies that have these kind of themes mm-hmm. with the lower class versus with the classes yeah. and stuff it's like it actually doesn't make sense to kill the lower class because that's how the rich are getting richer <laughs> exactly if that's you, a lot of drug dealers what you want to do is actually kill other rich people that way, you would think you, that, that way you could like buy their company. You can have them assassinated during the purge, and then like mm-hmm. buy their company and be like, "Oh, you know, he was a good guy." So we're just gonna buy his company and be even ten times more rich than we were before. Yeah, I mean, it's the yeah. purge, so nothing makes sense. Yeah, nothing makes sense. But what would you rate it though? Um, I would rate it uh, worth a hit. Yeah, worth it. Worth a hit. Yeah, you the, thought it was gonna blow your high. The, yeah, yeah, no, I thought it was going to, but the action choreography in the third act. The third act really was like. They pulled everything yeah. together, and I was like, you know what? This is not. This is definitely worth a hit, um, especially for the Purge fans. Like, I, you, you gotta see this, and yeah. especially the TV series is on, oh, sci- yeah. on Sci-Fi Channel. Uh, it's trailer. coming out in September. Um, this is the 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 Sci-Fi series is gonna follow directly after the film, after this first mm-hmm. Purge film. So, so if you're interested in watching the TV series, right. you just kind of gotta. See the first one. right right this will be like the setup for it because they had a whole little thing at, towards in the basically in the um at the very end of the of this movie yeah like, yeah it's kind yeah, of setting it up. Stuff. yeah yeah for for me i mean i'm not a huge fan of the first mm-hmm. franchise so i'm not as high as this movie but it does a lot better than i thought it was gonna be yeah i thought it was gonna be a high blower at first yeah. when i seen that cartoon villain they had in there <laughs> yeah like, there's no way they can redeem this but yeah <laughs> he's not too bad in the movie. No, he's, he's not in it that much. much. Yeah. No, he's not in it that much. Yeah, that's what that's what keeps it from being like blew my high for yeah. sure. So I'm not gonna give it a worth the hit, but I'll say it's some Reggie. Mm. Some Reggie, you'll probably take a hit of this oh, okay. weekend. But I, I mean, know. hey, that's just our opinion. It is. It's all subjective. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's really important. What did you guys think about this? Did you see the first Purge? Are you are you a fan of the Purge franchise? Let us know by commenting below in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe. To stay up to date on all the latest movie, TV, and gaming news from a higher perspective. I'm Kay. And I'm A. Rick. And always remember, blaze it. <laughs>